You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey, everyone, and welcome to another fantastic episode of Ask Drone You. My name is Paul. And my name is Rob. Thank you for joining us today for this episode 932. So grateful that you're hanging with us today. Hope you're having a great one. And I hope this podcast brings you a lot of value. Hope the podcast brings you value. But it's not like the organization and value that you'll find on the website. So make sure you become a Drone U member today. You can try it for a dollar. One dollar make you holla. At least it makes your intelligence holla. Anyway, check it out. DroneU.education. Rob, here we are today. We're going to be talking another question the question from Ken comes in about uh, calibrating the sensor of your drone and the position of it in relation to the drone's GPS for true RTK accuracy. So can we really get RTK grade data without a calibrated sensor? And the next question is, is can we get precise... Uh, precision mapping, sub-centimeter grade or sub-two-centimeter grade, uh, without an RTK drone. I'm really excited that I think RTK drones are not to the adoption rate yet where they are replacing the traditional means of survey-grade mapping, um, but they are definitely adding a new component of accuracy. So I'm excited to answer this question um, Today, which is brought to you by our book, Live in the Drone Life, and our other book, The Part 107 Drone Certification Study Guide. You can pick up both of them on Amazon. Yeah, so check it out. But let's go ahead and listen to today's question. Hey, Paul. Hey, Rob. Kevin, New Jersey. I had a couple questions regarding uh, mapping, photogrammetry. Um, one, with RTK systems like the Phantom 4 RTK, is there a necessary parallax correction from where the GPS antenna is on top of the Phantom or any drone to where the plane is of the image sensor of the camera? Is that necessary to take consideration and correct for that parallax to achieve that centimeter grade accuracy for GPS coordinates? Or does that somehow um, cancel out when you're building the model? Also, in the absence of RTK, can you build a very accurate model in terms of just links and volumes? Uh, not necessarily like surveys in GPS location, but just if you wanted to accurately show that, you know, if, if said company just laid down a football field or a soccer field or a baseball stadium, that you could draw lines in the three-dimensional model and show that, you know, they accurately got the distances that correct from sideline to sideline or end zone to end zone or home plate to first base, you know, down to a, a couple inches or so or whatever the tolerances they allow for uh, those types of things. Can you do that without RTK? Uh, I think you can, but I just wanted to know if uh, I was right. So just, I'd love to hear about it. Thanks. Thank you, Ken. Appreciate the question as always. Continuing to bring it. Guys, if you have a question like Ken does or 20 or 30, we love them all. Go to askdroneu.com, and we would be happy to get you in line to get on the show. All right. This one's all you, Paul. <laughs> that's uh, that's interesting. <laughs> I uh, had imagined that you were going to be answering most of it there, Is that Rob. Right? Yeah. Is that right? yeah. I mean, your your background in uh, GIS, you know, it's uh, I, thought, I thought it would be right up your alley. Well, I'll get back to you. Well, that's unfortunate. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right. Let's talk about this. Only drone with a calibrated sensor. So that means that the each sensor is calibrated right out of the factory. In addition, the GPS unit is calibrated to the camera uh, sensor position. Uh, oftentimes, it's not really widely known whether they're calculating the actual center point of the camera lens itself or if they're calculating the center point of the entry point of the lens, meaning where the, um, where the iris you know, actually opens up. Is, are they calculating that position or the back of the sensor? Either way, we know 
that the Phantom 4 Pro RTK is calculating the sensor position in real time and is writing that data to the EXIF. This actually, as I listened to Ken's question, I was like, oh, wow, I just came up with another new question that I might need to get answered um, uh, by Unique. And that is, are the new Unique drones that are going to be the RTK version, are they actually calibrating the, the camera sensor position in relevance to where the image is taken? I don't know the answer to that question. Um, I hope so, though, because Unique may actually have a very promising RTK solution if it is hot swappable. So very excited about that. To answer your question, how does it affect accuracy? Well, obviously, accuracy is vastly increased when the camera sensor position is calculated and accounted for. Typically, uh, you know, PIX4D tries to do some sort of camera position calculation and sensor position, but it's obviously not 100% accurate. Uh, now, that being said, where are you going to get the most absolute accuracies? It's probably going to be on a Phantom 4 Pro RTK. Uh, because as long as you have the RTK stream and you are getting real-time corrections, um, because it is calibrating the position of the sensor in relation to the GPS, and the GPS is getting real-time position corrections. Now, that being said, there's a very large caveat in there, and it, it kind of speaks to Ken's next question as we segue into that, which is, is this still the go-to method for gathering data? Can I still get precise survey grade maps without an RTK level drone? The answer is absolutely, and it is still the go-to choice. Oftentimes because you can't always guarantee the connection to the network. In fact, if you're familiar with the CORS network, it is shut down right now because of the government shutdown. Um, so surveyors who have to typically use the CORS network are kind of stuck uh, at least for the last 26 days, probably 27 by the time you hear this. That being said, a lot of people are still utilizing typical Phantom 4 Pros, and they're taking GCPs, five with two checkpoints, so a total of seven. They're laying them down, spread out throughout their map. They're still hitting those points with some sort of survey-grade GPS RTK tool, like the Leica GS14, GS16. Um, there's a Topcon solution. There's a Trimble solution. There's so many Trimble solutions, it's ridiculous. I actually just learned of a new solution that 3DR rebranded, and then I was like, ooh, maybe we should use that. Mm. Not the 3DR rebranded version, but the Trimble version. Yeah. So it's a lot cheaper. Um, but anyway, long story short... Um, is the RTK the go-to solution? Not yet, but we're on the precipice of it being that solution. So I would say every surveyor I know or that we've trained and that we collaborate with is still going the traditional route for speed and efficiency. Um, but I think we are coming into a day and age when RTK will be the, the absolute and the ultimate. Now, that being said, he asked one more question. He said, now, if I don't use an RTK drone, is this still going to affect my volume calculations. Now, this is an argument that you'll hear all the time. Uh, in fact, I asked Ongood about this in a, in a conversation over um, some very good scotch at a place called Hummingbird in, uh, right off the Potomac. And I said, hmm. I I'm really confused, dude. I'm, I'm, I'm really, really confused. And I said, I've, you know, people have been arguing with me about this whole, you know, doing volumetric measurements without GCPs. And he's like, oh, well, it's never going to be accurate unless you use GCPs. I'm like, I know. But in class, someone at PIX4D was like, you don't need GCPs to do volumes. Hmm. And I'm like, that's easily disprovable with exercise two from any PIX4D class, including drone use class, where you can very clearly see that you have to create scale constraints to set scale. And you have to do it on each axis in order to ensure scale is accurate. So if you don't have GCPs, you're supposed to be using three scale constraints, and you may even want to have more than that if you have a large area. So when I said, you know, why are they telling people you don't need to use GCPs uh, for volumes? He's like, well, that's because they don't, they don't know. And I'm like, well, this is unfortunate. We must correct the record immediately. <laughs> <laughs> you need GCPs for accurate volumetric calculations. In addition to that, uh, if you're, you are using the Phantom 4 Pro RTK in RTK mode, you do not need GCPs. Um, but if you use, are using a standard drone, a standard double grid without GCPs will not yield accurate, reliable results. You know what they'll yield? Uh, a bad word. 
I was trying to figure out inaccurate results. What was that old car that Ford made that they never made again? Because it was Pinto. Thank you. Thank you. The one that would blow up. (laughs) Yes. Yes. It's a Pinto. So I was, I was like, my dad owned one of them. Like, oh, no. Yeah, I was like, hey, everybody what did. was that car? I was just sitting here wheeling. Like, what was the name of that car? Um, but uh, if you are doing volumes, dude, you got to have GCPs. And that is a great segue into the point that our GCP landing pads are available, but we only have four sets left of the first run. Um, which means it's time for me to order another run. Uh, and our first run was stuck in customs last week. Should be here sometime soon. I'm not sure when it's going to be yeah, here. Yeah, apologies to those of you who have ordered them. They all, We just checked. Yeah, we literally yesterday, just checked. Yesterday, like, fact, hey, where are my no, pads? it was Friday, but they were stuck in customs, and that appears to still be the case. This happened last time, by the way. Did it really? I don't know if it's just... I don't know if they think that we're hiding something within the rubber <laughs> because there's not a lot of... I don't know what's going on, but we're hoping they'll be here soon. Maybe they think it's laced with the uh, little... Maybe, whatever it is. <laughs> 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 I guess it could be a myriad of things. <laughs> well, luckily it's not. Uh, <laughs> no, <laughs> sorry, no, we won't be not. energizing you through our landing pads. Just landing pads. <laughs> On that bombshell, that is going to do it for us today. If you have a question, go to askadroneu.com. And if you love us, please leave us a review to help other people find us. In addition, don't be afraid to share the show. You never know when the right information will help another person. And don't you like helping other people? My name is Paul. My name is Rob. This is Ask Droneu. (laughs) 